Hey friends, how are you doing? Uh, if you're watching live, then happy Friday to you. It's been a really, really long and cool few weeks. This whole thing with 5e that is still not quite blown over uh, with, um, you know, the OSR kerfuffle has changed the landscape for gaming and not an inopportune moment for other publishers. We're not going to talk about all the, the nightmare that's been going on for, for some, some people, but we are going to talk about some products that are out there that really, really provide an alternative experience that can match or maybe even surpass those experiences that, that are begin, being, uh, let's say, walked away from. I'm really excited to talk about the project that we've got tonight. Normally on a Friday, we do Kickstart Your Weekend, and we talk about our favorite projects on Kickstarter, back a kit, crowdfunding, basically. And this evening is no exception. We're going to talk about a, a setting for Savage Worlds, which is an incredible systems agnostic role-playing game that pulls together the amazing fun of Wuja films, the kind of Chinese fantasy martial arts stuff. And of course, Savage Worlds is a really pulpy game that brings a lot of dynamic, explosive fun to the table. But there's no point in me talking to you about this. I'm no expert. Let's bring someone on who really knows his stuff. The author and uh, co-creator of uh, Legend of Ghost Mountain for Savage Worlds. Uh, so without further ado, thank you for joining. If you enjoy this content, please hit like, please subscribe. Um, with uh, no further delay, Devious Dungeons, The Boating Forest, and The Coolest Cats. My name's Phil, and welcome to The Dark Orb. Mr. Daryl Hayner, how are you doing? Hi, everybody. Hey, Thank you for joining. And I'm just going to bring the chat on over to our left. Woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> we'll, yeah. have, right. we'll have comments there very soon. It always takes a little while to start. I can see that Bruce is here with us, Sanjuro. Thank you for joining. Um, do not feel that you cannot bring on the uh, the silliness and the heckling, uh, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Don't be gentle. I'm used to it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we were just talking actually in the green room before coming on about how uh, the um, the head god, god king, whatever you want to call him, of uh, um, of pinnacle, British, yeah, our president, so yeah, used to the British. God. <laughs> this is true. It's okay. I only heckle Phil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you still there? Yes. Ah, oh, Daryl, it's been so good to catch up over the last few weeks, and thank you so much for joining. Um, what are we here to talk Thanks about? Thanks for having Savage me. World. Oh, Savage Worlds. Savage Worlds. Savage Worlds. Savage Worlds. Um, I'm sure that a lot of people who join us and who watch this uh, this recording have probably played Savage Worlds before, but there might be some who don't really know the product at all. Uh, I thought it would be really great if we could start maybe with... Uh, an overview of what on earth Savage Worlds is and, and where it fits into like the role playing landscape, if you like. Yeah, right. And because it's it's not a generic system, but it's a system that supports a bunch of different settings, right? And yeah, the whole reason to have a different game system for things is so that it supports the stuff that you want to do well. And Savage Worlds tends to be more about pulpy action and horror stuff you know so it, it does it can do more than that we've got these setting rules that you can plug in and take out that'll change the feel a lot but that's kind of our bread and butter in all of the settings that we put out really emphasize all right what do you do <laughs> when you get in here right like a legend of ghost mountain what do you do well when the dead act up you've got to go fix their problems. And that could be beat them up and send them to hell. Or it could be, all right, what is this ghost's problem? Maybe there's an injustice that's happened here that I, I can fix, right? Mm. And that makes it easier for players to tune in. Because like one of the, I, I think one of the reasons Dungeons & Dragons has been so popular is it's right on the box what you do. Like you go yeah. into a dungeon and you fight a dragon, 
And I get that. Like, aha. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. so <laughs> in Savage it's World. A clever name. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And then, so in Savage World, like, you're going into a savage world. It can be pretty rough, but that's the, the that danger is exciting, you know, when you go into it is the, is the idea overall. And we can talk about how we make that idea come to the table, you know, in, in specific, but. Yeah. And, and that's it is that, for example, with Legend of Ghost Mountain, I mean, this is a setting, right? So, yeah. um, and this is one thing that's kind of different, I guess. If we were to analogize, Savage Worlds is a little bit like having the OSR in terms of as a core mechanism and a core set of fundamental rules that can be applied right. pretty much any type of game. The reality, in my experience, and I'm I'm not trying to kind of dig at, at any other system, but <laughs> in reality, I find that you have to change things quite an awful lot in certain systems in order to make them work with a completely different setting because it really is. And I've made this argument a lot on our channel previously um, that actually Savage Worlds can be this way as well. Um, but you can oh, yeah. really see how um, the 5e system is derived from a war game. But, but I think <laughs> where, it, where it kind of lets it down is unless you house rule the crap out of it, basically it's always going to feel that way. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Which is yeah. fine if that's what you want. Yeah, right. Well, and when we talk about, you know, I, I see a question, like, what makes this game different from, like, others? One of the things that differentiates it, like, on the table from, like, the general D20 experience is, and those, you've got hit points, right, that are going to degrade and go away as you fight. Yeah. Um, but, like, if you've got, 100 hit points you're not going to get one punched by something you know like it's that's just how it is savage yeah. world doesn't use hit points so there's a it's like, way savage it, it is like there's that danger like you've got things that you can do to defend yourself and protect yourself but at any given moment if the luck swings strongly one way or another you could be done and yeah like that makes even what should be an easy like encounter combat wise, like a little tense. Cause you're like, yeah, it's just like a goblin, but, <laughs> but they've just rolled like a hit and nine raises. Yeah, and exactly. I and only need four raises to die. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a one in a thousand shot, but that one in a thousand <laughs> shot exists, right? Like, uh Oh yeah. And then the other like big thing in it, a lot of games do this now. Savage Worlds was one of the first, if not the first. But we have this out-of-game currency called bennies, benefits, right? And you earn them from role-playing. You get three to start with. And when you play into your own like disadvantages, your hindrances, they're called, when you play into those, you can get more. When you're doing things that are moving the game forward, like the GM is supposed to just give them out, right? Like, hey... I found it like I, I go looking for a clue and you're like, oh man, that's great. That's going to move me to the next thing. Have a Benny. You, you, even if you don't find the clue, like you're looking in the wrong damn place, but you're looking, I'm going to give you a Benny. And that yeah. lets everyone know, oh wait, there's a clue around. That's a behavior we should be doing. I like and, to give Benny to people that make me really laugh. Yeah. Right. And if you do that, what you're going to get is people are going to be, wisecracking like they're going to mm -hmm. be throwing jokes mm -hmm. they're going to be doing funny stuff you're going to get the game that you reward you know with bennies and they really take the edge off when you're like i rolled bad like i'm the thief and i go to you know pick locks on this chest and i get a bad roll and it's like wow i feel like a crappy thief now <laughs> <sighs> oh i got a benny i'm gonna re-roll yeah. that and now i did great okay now i feel like a good thief and we laugh because people will burn their bennies on yeah. completely useless stuff. Yeah. But it's what makes their character feel like a character. So it's yes. not really a war game thing. It's a role playing thing. And yeah. We say, let the bennies flow, give them out, let people use them. There's, I've seen charity games, which are really fun, where um, the charity, you spend a dollar to buy the players bennies in the thing. Mm -hmm. And of course the, the, the game itself is really ruthless and brutal. So you need your bennies to survive. <laughs> and so like the, 
the, the GM's trying to kill him and the audience is 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 giving him Vinny. Chupacab- him. Yeah, Chupacabracon does this. Yeah, gives yeah. him Vinny's to try and save them, save their lives. Or if you're really cruel, you buy Vinny's for the GM <laughs> so he can do more stuff to the, the players. Yeah. yeah. And of course, the thing is then, as a GM, actually, it can be quite hard to remember to give those bennies out because you, you have to get that cycle going, I think. Otherwise, you your, players won't, your players won't spend them because they're not getting any more. So, you know, this, I think it also this, depends on whether you're trying to kill your players off or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, on the safety valve, the safety valve in Savage Worlds is there's a, a rule called Joker's Wild. Mm-hmm. Yes. We deal cards for initiative, which yeah. I will fight to the death anyone that says that's a bad idea. It's great. It's fun. Oh, it's, it's the it's fun, really right? Fun. But if, if one of the players gets a Joker, everybody gets a Benny. Hmm. And that changes the momentum of a fight so much. Cause you're like, oh man, we're on the ropes. We're on the ropes. Bam. Somebody gets a joker. It's like, aha, not only do they get benefits from the joker itself, but the whole team gets these bennies and you get this surge of activity. And it is just fun at the table. When that happens. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, Daryl, if, um, if I as the GM and I'm dishing out um, initiative cards to my players and also yeah. for my groups of NPCs. Yeah. Or if there are more than one wild card, and we'll get to what wild cards are in a second. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I give them each a um a uh, initiative card. So um what happens if one of my NPCs gets an initiative card? Well, if the bad guys get a joker, then the GM gets a Benny and any wild card bad guys get it too, which is great because that's where you see the momentum shift the other way and the players go, oh no, yeah. <laughs> like we're going we're gonna to get hosed here. So yeah, yeah that's and is there anything all about those there? big moments at the table. <laughs> <laughs> and is there any, this is a loaded question, is there any um, mechanism in place? Because obviously anyone who's, ca- uh, who's card counting at the table will then go, oh man, a joke has gone. <laughs> So. Well, once a joker goes out, that's that's the trigger to reshuffle the deck. Right. So, so you, you play out that, that round. Luck. Yeah. And and then reshuffle and go again. There yeah. are two jokers in the deck. So like both the good guys and the bad guys could get one. And that that's yeah. a big mess when it happens, but it can happen. Yeah, it's like it's a awesome. 26 chance, right? Um <laughs> so um I'll tell you one thing else that I really like. We were talking about how swingy the game is. Um in things like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, of course, you could have 25 hit points. And right up to the point where you've got three hit points left, you're still a superhero. Yeah. Well, Which I don't right. get. <laughs> and a lot of games are like that. I'm picking on D&D. Actually, it's not yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Most well, games are like that. <laughs> yeah. And, and the whole idea is, I mean, there is swing to it, but it's not like it's completely random, right? Like, there's a median... <laughs> You can have an expectation. It's like, oh, I know in general I'm either going to be like okay or just a little bit shaken up by this. Yeah. It's going to take something really wild to to take me down, you know, or yeah. to to knock me out in one shot. But yeah, instead of hit points, yeah, and here's one of the other things that makes it nice and simple is scrubs, like your regular guys, they're called extras, and they they don't have wounds. Like if if you can do enough damage to them to affect them. They're up, they're down, they're off the table. Yeah. Up, they're fine and fighting. Down, they're, it's what's what we call shaken. And if they get hit again while shaken, they'll they'll be gone. Um, or on their turn, they'll get back up and come back at you. And that brings some tactics into it. Or off the tables, like you did a, a wound to them, they're gone. The end. Don't worry about it anymore. And then heroes are wild cards, and your special villains. And not all villains are wild cards, right? But yeah. they're they're, they've got something extra, right? They get a wild die, which is going to boost their rolls up. And also they've got three wounds that they can take. So even if something bad happens, I, I took a wound. I'm hurt. I'm penalized. You know, and depending on the setting rules, I could be like injured. Like I could yeah. that, like lose an arm or a leg or, you know, until healed. But I'm not down and out until I've lost like, all three of my wounds. You can lose all three of your wounds in one blow. Like Been that's that. where that <laughs> massive damage you know, comes in. You're like, oh, I am not safe. <laughs> like, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> but your bennies can also mitigate that where you spend them to soak and take fewer wounds. So it's like, oh yeah, that would have one punched me. I spend a benny. I rolled to mitigate damage and I rolled really well. Turns out actually, and you know, the, you get to describe 
how this looks like, oh, I dodged it at the last minute or I took it right on the chin. Like, I, I got this, you know, yeah. or, you know, any, any kind of cinematic flavor of that, but you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yoel says liking uh, Call of Cthulhu, you can die from a punch <laughs> from another normal human, not to speak of how one shotted you can get by the mythos creatures, obviously. Um, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. But even, and even, even, Within limits, right? So the, there's a distinction in Savage Worlds, like heavy weapon and non-heavy weapons. Like a mm. mythos, mythos creature would be have heavy armor, which means if you're not using cannons, yeah, it, it, it's going to ignore you, right? But they might have, even without that, a very high toughness. And like, yeah, I need that one in a thousand shot to do anything, but just the fact that it could happen lets you try and tell that story. Like, yeah, whatever, let's ram him with a steamship. Maybe we'll get lucky. You know, <laughs> Maybe we'll you did get lucky. Look at that. <laughs> uh, Grom, thank you for joining us. Grom says, yeah. uh, I also give bennies when I cut the players short, investigating a metaphorical blind alley. Give everyone a Benny and tell them it's a waste of time. Yeah, time. It, exactly. It's a, it's a very powerful tool to direct... Activate the players. Yeah, exactly. Direct the game and... Like, yeah, exactly. Like, hey, like, I'm just going to capture you because you're off on your own here. here. Here's a Benny for your trouble. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, sorry, but here you go. Like, they're very nice for that. And you miss, you start missing them. And it's a mechanic you can use in any game. Like, honestly, when we play D20, we're like, can we just use Bennies? Yeah, okay. Might as well, you know, use them for the same way. Not, I feel like I should have rolled better on that skill check. Let me spend it. Reroll my D20. All right. It works great. And it and it promotes those positive behaviors at the table that just make the game more fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a lot of fun. I really like it. Um let's talk about the um the settings. So there's obviously Legend of Ghost Mountain looks amazing. I'm really excited to talk about that. Thank you. Um, but there are so <laughs> many settings as well that are already out. So um, if you wanted to jump on and, and get a feel for the system right now, you don't have to wait for um, this amazing uh, Kickstarter to complete. Um, yeah. It's doing so well, by the way. Um, Thank you. There is a minor <laughs> hiccup at the moment, at least if you're going to buy directly from, from Pinnacle, <laughs> in that um, if you buy a setting, it is literally the, the, the lore of the world and some campaign stuff and how to build your characters and that sort of stuff. But the mechanics are generally not included, right? Which is a really great way to cut down on the page count and, and actually keep things yeah. really pure. But yeah. it means you need one additional book. So, yeah, there is an exception to that, and it's especially relevant to people coming over from certain other fantasy games. What Like, we did a, a you know, reached out to our friends at Paizo quite a while ago and we've got what's called Pathfinder for Savage Worlds which is the Galerion yeah. setting like their IP and monsters using Savage Worlds system you know uh, Mike at, with us was working on that conversion yeah. and that's one of the few core books that actually includes the rules inside it so like you can just start at Pathfinder for Savage Worlds if fantasy is your thing like yeah, do that. yeah, that'll do just Absolutely. just fine for you. Uh, especially for... if you want to move away from D twenty and use cool dice and poke <laughs> pennies and and you know nearly kill your players every session. Um, <laughs> but what you otherwise what you'll need, and obviously the PDF, or you can probably still get this from your local game store, is the uh, yeah. I can make that. I'll embiggen it. Hey, there we go. Savage Worlds you, you will need, game core. Yeah, you will need the core book. And, and you'll uh, hear us call that Suede. It's the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. Suede, although there isn't like a Suede own. version. There is like a Leatherette version. There is a Leatherette version, yeah. But but there's not a Suede version. <laughs> so I feel kind of cheated. Um, and I'll be honest, I nearly bought that Leatherette version many times, but UK shipping was painful enough pre-pandemic, and, and now it's kind of worse. <laughs> I mean, and that's not a dig at you guys, obviously. Oh, no, like, like in, in our internal meetings, like, you can say the word shipping and you see some people's souls leave their bodies, right? Because it's <laughs> it's our biggest challenge. You know, we try yeah. to put these books out in a you know cost-effective manner for the audience. Mm. And, like, it's tricky. Like, how do you put out 
like, is it better to just do a gigantic, you know, $80 book when you're going to be spending $20 for shipping? Or yeah. if you can get like this slim light, you know, like, oh, we can do this for $40, but you're still paying $20 for shipping that doesn't yeah. feel like a bargain anymore. So no, no, there's a lot of like tension. Like, how do we do this the best? Like for people, like exactly. what's going to work here? You know? Exactly. And that's where... Um, for me, at least, because I, I, everything that I've got from uh, for Savage Worlds has come directly from you guys, actually, um, through things like uh, pledge managers. So, um, yeah. I bought um, when I bought Lost Colony, um, I actually threw on uh, the Suede book and nice. uh, Deadlands Noir. I love Deadlands Noir. That's my um, 1920s kind of noir, uh, New Orleans especially. Yes, so much fun. yeah, the, the core um, game set in New Orleans, scariest yeah. city in the world. Like, I'm sorry, anyone that lives there, it's a scary city. <laughs> it's, it's scary and beautiful and amazing at the same time. Oh, right? yeah. Exactly. I mean, no lie, right? But it, but it's just that perfect setting for, like, yeah, these dark gum shoes, you know, finding magic and voodoo and horrible yeah. mysteries. And on that setting, like, the setting rule is everyone, it's during the, the Great Depression. So in the normal game, you have starting money and, you know, a, a certain amount that you would expect as an adventurer mm -hmm. in noir, the setting rule is nope, <laughs> it's a great depression. You got like five dollars. Good luck. Yeah, if you're you really rich, you might have ten. <laughs> right. I think yeah. it's like two hundred if you're really, really super rich or something. Yeah. I can't remember now. It's been if a while. If you're really rich, like you've got a car and oh, that was it. Yeah. You've got a job. It might not be a good car. <laughs> yeah. Um I have a question for you. Um mm, yeah, fire away. And uh Viewers, uh, I apologize. I'm going to kind of personalize this this Savage mm -hmm. Worlds thing for a second, um, but it is a question for, for a reason. You'll see. Um, so, when we started playing Savage Worlds, and my disclaimer is that actually I've not managed to play Savage Worlds in person yet, and I've played it a bunch. We it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. I'd had the books for a while, but then the pandemic happened and lockdown and all that sort of stuff. And I'd already bought a Fantasy Grounds license, and this is not a dig at Fantasy Grounds. Mm -hmm. I had a VTT available already. Is, is yeah. the point? Yeah, so yeah. So we, so um, we were playing Deadlands mm -hmm. Noir, which is a bit of a hack because it's not really for Suede. It's for Deluxe, which is the previous version of Savage Worlds. But that's fine. And yet um, they're all very, very like there's updates to Suede, yeah. but the core grammar is exactly the same. So it's not exactly. that. Exactly. You know. Exactly, and we made it work um, until an update for the VTT mm -hmm. broke things. <laughs> um, which was my bad. I was the one running it, and I work in IT, so I should know better. Um, Never know, get off the boat, man. <laughs> update a production system whilst you're using it. No, that's fine. Honest. Anyway, um, long story short, we um, we decided that it would be high time to just play it the old-fashioned way, right? With dice, and um, we all had bennies available and that sort of thing. So rather than going the VTT route, we'd just wing it whilst I... For the you know, in my spare time, tried to reinstall Fantasy Grounds and get it all working again. Um, and of course, the first thing you learn when you step away from a VTT of a game that you've been running that you've only ever played in a VTT <laughs> is that you might not have any idea how to play that damn game. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first thing. Um, but actually, what I found, what we all found, um, and players, if you're watching and you disagree, then please type in. Um, is that when you play like traditional when you traditionally play a game like Savage Worlds when you've come from VTT that the VTT by default will apply every damn rule you know so everything is literally by the book and that really changes the experience when you have to do it manually and that we found that combat for example in Savage Worlds when you're giving every NPC its own initiative card Oh and, God! Yeah, no. exactly. No, that's my point. That's my point. And when you when you've seen it being done by automation, it's easy to presume that that's the best way to play it because yeah. the automation is going to be doing it right, right? So, um, can you explain maybe how the feel of Savage Worlds can be changed by yeah. that? Well, right. And so, very purposefully, like when you hear Shane talk about you know, how we design and how like this is implemented. Mm. And he likes to joke that people are going to use about 30% of the rules tops 
And the best we can do is trying to kind of guide them to the right 30%. <laughs> <laughs> you can just like, do it uh, undeluxed. Yeah, right. So, but in the suede book is very purposefully, when you get to the rules, like the actual like rules rules, that's not, that's like 10 pages, right? Like yeah. that's how to do a trait roll, how to deal with damage. And that's it. And that's really all you need. And then right after that, here are the, the, the extras that make combat, like add depth to combat, like gang up yeah. bonus and some of the maneuvers that you can do. Like, cool. They, they add a lot when you want them, but they're not necessary to the, the basic enjoyment of the game. Mm. And then even after that, we've got the toolkit, which has, yeah. all right, I need to, I want to add some oomph to this scene. Like just a die roll doesn't feel right here. I need something more, something more dramatic, like a dramatic task or a social yeah. encounter or a chase or a mass battle. You're never going to use those all at once. And, you know, Challenge probably expected. not. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I'll play with them, right? Because they do add a significant, yeah. like, but it's not a intended, significant. They use all the time. Yeah, it, well, exactly. And that's, and that's part of the, Thing that you learn is when to engage those extra rules, but don't you don't feel the pressure to add all of those layers at once. If you're new, start with the basics, man. Just have a trait roll. You're good. Like that's that's it. Like that's all yeah. you need to do. And we kind of laugh when people are like, "Oh, like this is a very like here's a light narrative system versus a crunchy, you know, deep system." And we're like, you know, the way we play it tends to be way light and narrative where yeah. like, are we rolling dice? Yeah, a couple of times. Well, we'll deal some cards and do a thing. But for the most part, it's just like, bam, bam, bam. And everything's weighted to be fast, furious, fun, right? Yeah. And if it's not feeling fast, furious and fun, take a moment. He's like, okay, wait, 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 wait. Maybe I'm applying the wrong layer here. I, I mm -hmm. need to step back, you know? Awesome. And in terms of the actual core system, I'm just going to very quickly say um, it's really fun. So you have basically, um, in in layman's terms, you have the your kind of your core, um, so your core attributes and yeah, you got attributes, uh, strength, vigor, yep. smarts, spirit, agility, what you would expect, right? Like, and you get to roll a die for those, uh, all for all for your uh, traits and what you want to do, and yeah. The better you are, the higher the value of the die, right? Yep. D4 is terrible. Like that's like where everyone starts at D4. D12 is like amazing. Mm. And the, the way I try to explain the core mechanic is four is the magic number. If we don't tell you something different, you're trying to get a four on that die. So on a D4, you can tell what your odds are. They're not yep. great. You know, on a D6, oh, it's back up to 50-50. So I've... Yep. I've got a little bit of skill in this 50% of the time I'm going to do it. Right. D eight. Oop. My odds are going way up. D 12. They're huge. Right. Yeah. Four, 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 four. And that could be then, modified, right. It can be modified. Right. It, yeah. Like, and, but that's one of those layers. Like yeah. you, you can have modifiers, but don't drive yourself crazy trying to look them all up. It's like, well, that feels like it should be hard. <laughs> But then yeah. you have to add the armor, and then you subtract that. <laughs> yeah, forget all it that. Can, right? It like, can easily happen. Yeah, we will. We'll, we'll, by, by gut feel, can't you? That's just it. We'll list them so people have an idea of what we're mm -hmm. talking about. But really, it's minus two is hard. Minus four is like, that's really hard. And minus six is that's damn impossible. Yeah. That's it. If you know that, like, and again, the modifiers will tell you like, hey, this is to give you an idea of what's hard or the things yeah. that you should be mindful of that would make this harder, like range or you're blinded, you know, yeah. I can't see anything. Minus six. Okay, bam, move yeah. on. Um, and that just means that when you roll the die, whatever your, um, whatever your high, highest die is, because um, there's a, a little bit of secret sauce coming. Um, yeah, <laughs> that, uh, that you basically subtract that modifier from your highest roll. Yeah, but and do you but, still have the four? Yep. Yeah. But how can I roll uh, an eight with a d4? Is that possible? Right. Yeah, yeah. And there's two tricks here. Like one is acing, and this is where the game is so much fun at the table, right? 
Yeah. Other game systems will call this exploding. And you'll hear us call it exploding too, because it's very dramatic to say a dice exploded. There's a funny article about you know five injured and a savage world's dice explosion, which <laughs> oh, <you know. laughs> but yeah, we yeah. It yeah, we call it acing. When you get the top value of the die, you add another die of that type to the result. So like, oh, yeah. I only had a D4. I got a four. Awesome. The next roll is a four. But it keeps going. And then yeah. it's a three. My total is eleven on one D four. And you talk about that. <laughs> yeah, is it going to happen a lot? No, but when it does, it's super exciting at the table, yeah. and it means like big things can happen. You might as well try. And yeah, and that's that thing of your target is four, multiples of four. Basically, yeah. you mean that thing happens more, more. Yeah, well, and generally, <laughs> on, on like most of the time, it, it, we call this a raise. Mm -hmm. Four is what you want. If you beat it by four or more, you got a raise, which is. It's good. Like if there's inf extra information, yeah. da, da, da. most of the time we don't care about multiples after that, which cuts way down on the math. It's like how yeah. many raises you get. I don't care. You got one. <laughs> that's all like, that's yeah. as much as you're going to get. Damage is where more can come into play, but you know, that's a special case. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that helps mitigate this is the wild die. So heroes, wild cards of the wild die. Also roll a d6 in addition to whatever their trait is. Wait, so that, that means I could be rolling a d4, but I get a d6 as well? Correct. Because you're a dang hero, right? Like, yeah, heroes yeah. are lucky. Heroes have that extra <laughs> something like that's going to come yeah. come forward. You know, Extras don't get that. And that's why like, even like an extra with a d8 against a wild card with a d6, wild card's got an edge on that extra, yeah. right? He's, he's, he's generally more competent because he's a hero you know? but your bad guys are, are wild cards as well so they also <laughs> get to correct yeah 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 exactly yeah and uh but yeah and the result is yeah you've got that mitigating factor you've got a little bit of luck there so a hero is gonna succeed on average tasks a lot and when even when they're it's a little bit difficult though they've got a good shot at it and that also makes it feel better when you spend a Benny to re-roll. You're re-rolling both the trait die and the wild die. You've got more chances to make something happen. So yeah. it's an action game. Like, make it's something happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And I suppose whilst we're talking about action games, um, Dal, if you'd mind, tell me about Wuxia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. And so, like, even just base Savage Worlds has got some great combat stuff in it. It's got these edges that help your fighting skill, help you use it in different ways. And so you've got a lot of different styles just in the core book to make melee combat, and when you mix in range combat too, like very entertaining and fun and furious, right? Like fast, furious, yeah, fun. Yeah. And the Legend of Ghost Mountain was the, it, the genesis of it came from Shane coming out of Kung Fu Panda and just having an idea <laughs> from that. No, right? Kung Fu Panda's legit. Like, as so a it's very, not Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It's not House of Flying Daggers. It's Well, Kung it's Fu all Panda. of those things, right? Oh, I know, so, I know. I'm, 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 yeah, like, I'm, Kung Fu Panda, like, codifies. <laughs> yeah. Kung Fu Panda codifies a lot of the things that show up in those others and puts them yeah. in this package that people that aren't into the genre like get. So like I totally, like, yeah, it's legit. Kung Fu Panda yeah. that tells the story, right? So that that was what hit the spark. And then the way Shane approaches settings, you know, like Deadlands and what mm. like these others is, what do you do? Right? Like it's not just like, all right, we've got magic and martial arts. We're, why yeah what is a player supposed to do with that like what's the story and from him comes this idea of they're called ghost wardens and mm -hmm. there's this gate to the underworld and kung fu planet boom i'm like yeah right yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> right it's actually it's really actually good. a well-written movie <laughs> yeah one of my, my favorite articles was the uh, like China's reaction. It was like, dang it, I can't believe that we didn't do this. You know, <laughs> um, that needs to do it as a live action. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, we've got, yeah, like there's definitely more beyond Kung Fu Panda, everyone, you know, but it's a good place to start. If you yeah. Uh, but um, the, so you've got, yeah, these, these ghost wardens and there's a gate directly to the underworld. And when you die, your ghost is supposed to go through the gate and mm -hmm. get judged and punished for whatever sins that you've got. And then once that's done, you can be reborn and come back. Mm hmm just like people don't always do what they're told to do, the ghosts of people don't always do what they're told to do, and they can resist that pull. And this right. is what creates hauntings, you know, things like that. Okay. And also, the, the soul and the body are two different things. So not only can the soul not do what it's supposed to do, but the body, if it is <laughs> ill-treated, can be upset and be like, look, mm -hmm. man, my job is supposed to just decompose and go away. But I have been ill-treated. I am damned unsatisfied to be used <laughs> in this manner. I'm going to get up and I'm going to eat people because I'm just mad. I'm not going to take it anymore. <laughs> me. Right? And so, yeah, and ghost wardens, their job is dealing with both of those things when they happen. Very nice. There's different ways that they can deal with them. And we've got inside the campaign an overarching story where the – an entire army of the dead has risen and are just trashing the country. And, and that's the, um, one of the, the plot points campaigns, right? It is, right? The Inevitable Army. It's called yeah. Face the Inevitable. Oh, nice. This particular campaign, right? And so as you're, you know, four, five, six heroes, well, you can't fight an army directly. You're going to have to find out why this is happening. You're going to have to build up forces to meet them. You're going to have to pull away some of their heroes or mm -hmm. find ways to face their heroes directly, like in the conflict. And you've also got to sway the, the, the emperor mm. or remove him. So there's a political element Ooh, yeah. too. Yeah, like, big politics. Like, yeah, big politics. So there's role-playing up. Yeah, it's not unexpected. just. Yeah, exactly. It's not just fighting. Mm. Like in any savage setting, it's, it's like, yes, there's fighting. Absolutely. You know, with, yeah. with savage worlds, right? But there is more than that. There's some a lot of choices and role-playing opportunity that you've got that are going to tell you what this setting even looks like at the end of it. Because you can lose, and there's still a game. Yeah, now you're fugitives, you know, from the <laughs> from an empire of the dead. That sounds like a fun campaign to me too. <laughs> you know, right? like, yeah, it sounds amazing. And um, I mean, the campaign is doing amazingly well as well. So we'll we'll take yes. A thank you all for coming. In a, yeah, a little yeah. while. It's just so. It's doing fantastically. I mean, the target was eight thousand dollars. We're at just over seventy three thousand now. Well, Seven hundred thirty four. I think we're gonna get. I think we're gonna get the cloth map. That's the one I really want to see unlocked. And it was cloth like, map for the best. Yeah, because we've got this gorgeous map that was done of the Central Empire, and it gets used mm. in the campaign because you actually do. You've got to go from place to place, and there's mm -hmm. you know determines how long it takes and yeah. if you're you're drawing for random encounters along the way which can trigger nice. entire story elements so kind of almost like a hex crawl then a little bit yeah like no hexes right and right but but the other thing is early on in the campaign you get a magic item that lets you see where the inevitable army is and the campaign itself kind of has a time limit because they're mm. going to go from point a to point B and point C is, you know, the, the capital city. Mm -hmm. You've got until they reach the capital city to get done what you're going to get done. And so you yeah. can choose like, all right, well, they're still way over here. We've got time for a, a side mission. Like we found out that there's, you know, this dragon slaying saber mm -hmm. in a hidden city over here. I, we've got time to go get it. And that's going to give us a big boost in this fight. Or we've got time to go fight in a martial arts tournament and the winner is going to get control of the martial world long enough to bring those fighters into this battle as a unified front rather than individuals helping out here and there. So a lot of choice, you know, and that, that's where the clock becomes important. You know? And is that, um, so we talk about that in the cloth map, there's a print map already. Yeah. Included. We're going to do um, the, we're going to do the map no matter what, but right. what, yeah, and the fun thing, like, if you've seen a lot of Pinnacle Kickstarters, sometimes we, we'll just post the goals as we go. 
because mm. we're kind of like trying to calculate like where does this make sense how fast is it going to go are we, you know we're going to have something to talk about like yeah. as we go and on this one it was like well we actually know exactly what numbers make sense to do the cloth map yeah let's just set it right and yeah. if we don't hit it that's okay we've still got enough stuff in there that everyone's going to feel good if we do hit it this now makes it makes sense for us it makes sense for you it's a cool thing that we can upgrade and it's great right you know and we just did it that way i like that you know personally. i think that's, that's very cool um so a couple of things on that, that i think are really important i have a bit of a bugbear uh, there are some publishers out there that do this and um it's really obvious when it's done um where <laughs> Like a box set has a bunch of stretch goals, and it's quite clear from all of the art, etc., that that box set's going to have that stuff in it regardless. But they're just making it a stretch goal anyway. Like, oh look, another page on something or other. Yeah, you, you can't actually have that product without it. So this doesn't really feel like much of a stretch goal. Um, it, well, and it's yeah, and it's definitely on the inside. Like it's tricky, right? Because yeah, you have to do that balance. You, you have to do that balance is you like because especially like page count in mm. specific yeah you would never do that for something that you couldn't do without but there yeah. are times like where you're like you know this is a cool thing and we've got it tucked aside and would do mm. it as a free pdf or something but it doesn't make sense to add any like all publishing is done in units of 16 pages yeah you know and or eight pages yeah like half of the the 16. it's all so geometry like, well, folks <laughs> yeah it is right and it's like well i mean i do want to add this but i don't really have the pages to do it but yeah. if our numbers hit this it does make we can add half a signature signature is 16 pages yeah we can add half a signature and that gives us room to put this extra material in that's a fair unlock right like yeah. and it's cool Maybe. you know we we would we have done it like as a free PDF anyway? Sure, probably, but it wouldn't yeah. have been in the book. No, and that's where actually you'd end up maybe saving, banking that content and maybe mm -hmm. either doing it as a PDF or or making an additional print book further down the line as a Yeah, a like or campaign. a companion that's got additional yeah. adventures and exactly. options and things like that. Yep. But would that cloth it map likely be included in the retail box if yes like, if we upgrade wow. it it is upgraded that's wow. the whole thing that's, right? cool. like that's that's exactly that's the point where it makes sense and like we're not going to go back and print the other map it's like oh good good it's just but that's it because map. you know i think a lot of publishers out there would say okay but this amount then now there's a cloth map which you can pay for additionally or there's a cloth map but it's a kickstarter exclusive um and then yeah. you know if you can't afford to to back it at, at kickstarter or if the shipping is just too high and you want to wait for it to come retail locally, for example, then yeah. you missed out purely because of the logistics of it, which is a real shame. But it also makes sense because, like the like, the miniature is probably a good example of this. You've got an, let's do you know what? Let's do the something dragon. radical. Let's let's actually show the the campaign. Yeah. So um, right. we ended up not at the beginning. So let's go up here. Um, but this is kind of what to expect if you go all yes. in. <laughs> we, and, um, we tried hard to fill that box, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can speak from experience that um, these boxes are packed. I mean, occasionally you have a little bit of packing cardboard in case you want to put an additional yeah. book in there or something. Um, you may have seen behind me, um, so I've got a couple of the previous boxes. They're not particularly thick, the Deadlands ones. I don't think they really compare. Um, and then I've got the, um, gosh, I can't even think what this is called now. That's um, the suede essentials box. Essentials yeah. box, thank you. And it says essentials. I mean, it's not really essentials. It's frivolities that you really damn want. Well, right. Exactly. That's just it. You really want it. If you're playing at the table, that box has got stuff that you will use. And that's the other yeah. thing that we try very hard to do because we play this, right? Like this is yeah. not a mental exercise for us. I run this at conventions and these are the things that I want to have. Like I've made my own yeah. or I've got my own equivalents to do. So I know yeah. like, look, if you're doing it, at least the way I do it, this is stuff you'll want. You don't yeah. have to use it. You don't have to have it. And that's why I'm like, all right, just take the book, figure it out yourself. Good luck. But we've done the work for you. And that's the yeah. other thing with Savage Worlds is 
we're a little bit more adult skewed because we're all old and out of time. <laughs> so it's <laughs> really like if, time in multiple ways. <laughs> right. So it's like, if, if you can make, if you can do that work for me, I will take it. Like yeah. I don't have to paint my minis. I've just got pawns. Let's do this. I That's don't have true. to draw like prep a map. Here's the map, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's very true. I mean, you know, I, I love have miniatures at the table, even if you're not like measuring with a, a tape measure and stuff. Um, but having the printed standees, poems, whatever you want to call them, just like a little, you know, cardboard figure that stands up that represents your villagers or oh, even yeah. your players. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? I, it, it maybe it's not as dramatic and, and as awesome as having a hand painted miniature that's been, you know, printed over many hours and then poured <laughs> over and has, you know, 30 hours of painting on it. But if you're the GM and you have to do that for every single miniature. You ain't going to get much time for game prep. <laughs> That's just it. Like, I, I have been doing that for 30 years. So yeah. I've got hundreds of Wuxian miniatures, you know, like, and I have, I pretty much wrote the campaign around them, right? Like, yeah. oh, well, here's what I've got. Like, I'm going to throw something like that in here. But I still use the pawns. <laughs> I can't believe right? that you're not providing, like, hand-painted miniatures. <laughs> yeah, right? Part of the campaign. Well, yeah, I mean, and, but that's something that Savage Worlds we haven't necessarily right. done because, and again, the pawns are you don't have time, but you want to play in these tactical options. They're better if you've got something that tells yeah. you who is where. You know, it doesn't yeah. need to be even, it doesn't even need to be like a grid or anything like that, but just like, oh, there's five guys and they're this far there away or they're close to you, they're on top yeah. of you. And oh my God, here's a big tall one. And then that's a moment, right? You're like, yeah. oh my God, look at that thing. That's huge. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then when you when you look at what comes in the actual the box, it's it's not just uh, a bunch of you know <laughs> people. You've yeah, got it's the map not just to people. Them on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you've got creatures. You've got yeah. um, you've got your bennies. Um, I still miss. I, I'm very lucky that I've got the Deadlands Noir bennies that are still clay. Um, you know, that's Plastic is the industry standard now, unfortunately. It is, it is. I like clay ones too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like you know, the then you drop too. them and they chip and then you just cry. Um, yeah. But you've got your books, you've got um, like archetype cards, archetypes are like. Um, yeah. So, not really archetype, classes, but. Yeah. Go. Well, archetype, one of the things too is it's a, it's a genre that not everyone is familiar with. You know, like we do a yeah. lot of stuff like that. Yeah. And if you know what you want to play, man, absolutely build it and play it. Right. Yeah. Great. If you don't know, here's something that you can use, something that you can latch on to that's going to guide new players to, ah, these are the options. This is what, you know, these, these are the people that would be ghost wardens. This is what this would look like. And also, again, we're old. We don't have the time to do that. Like, yeah. we couldn't get together and make characters and not everyone bought the book. Like, look, let, here's the stuff. Let's just yeah. play. Just just Let's build just a character play. from this. Yeah. yeah. And Savage Worlds is not really one for classes in the traditional sense, is it? So Correct. Yeah. You you have, yeah, essentially you've got we, yeah, we and again we call them archetypes, but mm. they're your 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 concept, right? You've got a concept that you yeah. build from, and then you've got points. I'm gonna take these traits, you know, this skill is gonna go up, this attribute feels like something this guy would be good or bad at. And yeah. then some some hindrances, which are going to be all your personality. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm a coward. I'm, you know, this, that. Like, all right, bam. Like, and that gives you something to latch onto. And then your edges, which are like, this is what differentiates me. Like, to, both of us have a D8 fighting skill, but we've got different edges. That means we're using that D8 in completely different ways once combat starts. And that really lets every character shine in a different way. And I think it's really fun as well because, I mean, g going back to my experiences at the table as a player, the last character that I created was a Deadlands Weird West and uh, <laughs> my friends around that. And I decided to create a cowboy who was um, magically trained but was extraordinarily ordinary. And he could not <laughs> do anything exciting. Like, all his edges were really practical. <laughs> <laughs> And everyone else is like, what can you actually do? Well, I seem to be able to die quite a lot, and I'm the healer. So, <laughs> But that's the fun. You can, you can make something yeah, I, really fantastical, or you can go kind of mundane. And I, and I bet that guy's awesome, especially like, like 
as you earn a little bit, like just give him a lawn. And it's like, okay, I went from being average at everything to being yeah. really good at what I need to be good at. But you know what? He was also kind of moment. old. He <laughs> <laughs> was like, he was also like properly like old, old. Um, nice. and he had, he had the, um, oh, I've forgotten the name of the, um, of the, uh, trait. Um, but the, you know, the one where basically you, um, you start off with more, um, edges than everyone else but oh, oh, oh veteran veteran of the weird west yeah that's, that's the one um many of our settings yeah have an option yeah. where you can take this edge and you'll you basically start more advanced than everyone yeah. else but <laughs> the cost of that is yes. you've been through it and you're gonna there's gonna be a random side effect to it up through and including death <laughs> yeah, so we had that and i gave him unlucky as well <laughs> and I didn't give him anything that was in any way supernatural law or, you know. Oh, kind of, wow. It was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. But that's that, my point being that, that you can really create anything that you like within this world. And, you know, if you oh, think yeah. it's going to be fun to play, you can do it. Um, oh, but yeah, Shane's play, run a, a fantasy game for us. We're going to publish this someday. Somehow <laughs> we're going to get it out. He called it Silver Sentinels, right? Okay. And we're, you're basically the, like, 80-year-old retired D&D party. And your kids have gotten in trouble, essentially. <laughs> so you, everyone you play, like, it's like, oh, fighter, ranger, whatever. But they've yeah. got that old hindrance. Like, <laughs> like I built I built a ranger, and yeah. he, like his eyesight was shot. So, like, I'm <laughs> minus two to use my bow. I don't know. I got a D12 bow skill, but, like, I'm nearsighted. So yeah. like, if it's more than 10 away. I'm like, ah, where is he? <laughs> Got all this tracking stuff, but I'm hard of hearing. Oh, I'm it's all in fun. on that. I'm yeah, right? all in on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, by the time it comes out, I mean, you know, I'm already at that point. I'm, I'm older than I look, and <laughs> I'm already at that point where, you know, I always say, the moment that you wake up in more pain than when you went to bed, it's a bad moment, and that happened years <laughs> ago for me. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so by the time that comes out, we'll, we'll definitely just be creating characters of ourselves, and you know, <laughs> anyway. We should probably talk a bit more about this. Oh yeah, sorry. I got distracted. I like Ghost Mountain. Right. But yeah. but the fun thing is like that's all from core, and you can do that here, right? Like all of these options still apply to Legend yes. of Ghost Mountain. Yeah. You know, and and still the, Savage Worlds. And there is a oh, the dragon. Yeah, yeah. So we generally don't do miniatures. And this is one of those things like it's only really Shane ones, can right? yeah, that only Shane can get away with where when we were building this out and figuring out like how we were going to market it. He's mm. like, we should do a giant dragon. And we're like, what? <laughs> we, we can do that. On, <laughs> I could have such a thing. What? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you know, poor Simon, our president is just like, ah, let me figure out if we can do it. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the guy that's got to go find a sculptor and through yeah. the, you know, the 3d and all that and make it happen. But yeah, we've been making more friends in different parts of the industry. Now we've got people that can do it and make it happen. And, it's also kind of a test, right? Like to see if people, something that people like, and maybe it's a direction that we'll explore more in the future. I think that's really cool because um, yeah, there are official, I believe they're official um, minis for Deadlands. Um, yeah. I guess originally they, that was a, like reloaded or something. Yeah, it was a partnership with Reaper, Reaper Mini. Yeah. They're still available. Yeah. Yeah. And Noir as well. Um, yeah. I think yes. I accidentally have um, one of the Deadlands Noir uh minis from a reaper advent calendar but i didn't know nice. that's what it was at the time and it's painted up completely wrong so <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, right. i'm pretty sure they've got them in bones now too yeah like those same sculpts so. appear in bones yeah and and they're great so you know if you do want to get some official stuff this older stuff available but uh, i mean this <laughs> technology has changed a lot since then. <laughs> put it that way <laughs> You've got the time to paint and the will to do it. Otherwise, we got you covered I've with got the wills. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've spoken about um, what well, Savage Worlds is, and there is a test drive rules. Check it out if you haven't done already, because I mean, yeah, it is. It can be very complex. It can be very slow and crunchy. And as I said, that's always been, it, um, or that has largely been my experience personally. Yeah, if but, you choose, right? And this yeah. is the thing with VTTs, right? Because, yeah. uh, and and we get love them. Don't get me wrong. And we we've, we've partnered with you know, at least three, you know, to get There's our stuff. A bunch out of people. great ones out there. It, it is right. But almost all of them started with Dungeons and Dragons because True. that's what the majority of people play. It makes sense to start there. 
So yeah. they're kind of built along those lines and there's an extra layer of complexity doing Savage Worlds because yeah. we do things in a different way. So it's like, oh, it's trying to push you this way and we've got to like step back and move over to the left into the yeah. So things can seem more complicated, you know, like cards for initiative. Yeah. It's like, well, if it's d and I'm just rolling dice and it's setting a turn order. Yeah. Whereas ours is very fluid. Like you get new cards every round and you're jumping up. Which and I love. At the, exactly. But at the table, yeah. that's seamless because you just get a card and when you look at the table, who's got the highest one, go. Bam. And when yeah. they go, they hand their card in and now you know that person's done. They don't yeah. have an action anymore. What's the next highest? Bam, 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 bam. Super fast. On a VTT that wasn't necessarily built with that in mind, that's a little bit of a struggle at first. There's yeah. ways to do it, but you got to know that. And so it can feel a lot harder than it actually is when you have that first VTT experience, for sure. And I think VTT automation is inherently crunch-driven. And yeah. so we'll always lean towards crunch because you can automate crunch. You can't automate narrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, well I the, don't know. With chat G, uh, GPT, you probably can, but you know. <laughs> it's coming, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the and the other thing I always tell people is most of them have an option to do is turn on 3D dice, where yeah. whenever you roll, whether you're rolling annually or whatever, it has a bunch of dice flop on the thing. It makes the noise. And that gives you the more of that feeling is if, if the sheet's doing it automatically and it just says 21, you're like, okay, I got a 21. When you see a D six, like, like blow up in the four D sixes, you go, Oh, yeah. something big just happened. Like in everyone at the table goes, Oh, Whoa, something big just happened. I must confess, that. it's a lot more fun than than just going to say, oh, I rolled a six, I rolled a six, I rolled a six, I rolled a six. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, you know, as much as we all trust our players, otherwise we wouldn't be playing with them, you've always got that kind of, really? <laughs> <laughs> Nine times in a row? <laughs> but, it can you know, happen. Yeah, right. I've, yeah. I've certainly rolled like four or five in a row, and felt guilty for it because there's no way to prove it unless you've got a dice cam there right so, um, <laughs> but the the campaign let's let's have it yeah, keep diving through so yeah. you've got your ghost wardens you spoke, yes now, oh i'll tell you what i really love about this so um a lot of in this kind of game uh, um a lot of drive is kind of pulled from emotions Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was another decision that Shane made early on that like the fighting styles, mm. rather than being based on known styles of Kung Fu or, you know, the animal styles or things like mm -hmm. that, let's base them on emotions instead. Yeah. With the idea that emotions are something that you can play at the table. Like we're role actually... players. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, what I meant to say is actually... A lot of games like this, the the, um, the powers drawn from animals and from elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not from emotions. So as you were, right. and that, exactly. And that's <laughs> but that's that's classic, right? Like yeah, that, yeah, that exactly. appears all over the place. I mean, and we do have some elemental stuff too. Like there's different types of sorceries. So yeah. you see, one of the archetypes uses fire, right? And the the cult of the holy flame you know, is what <laughs> what she goes through. You have to say Maybe it that way. Yeah, right. And, you know, maybe she's a little too into burning stuff with that flame, but Fire. it's okay. We've all got our problems. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, so, yeah, like all of that stuff is there. And if you, you know, if you know it and want it, you've got it. Yeah. But the, 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 the twist is there's also this emotional based stuff. And even that, like, it, it's it's fun because they're, they, that exists in the source materials, too, like in the tropes mm. of Wuxia. Like there's characters in Condor Hero that he develops the sorrowful palm style, right? He basically weaponizes his own tragic backstory. <laughs> you know, and just the more it's angsty kind of nice, and really. it is, yeah. Like the more <laughs> angsty and you know horrible his life gets, the better yeah. and stronger a fighter he becomes. And that guy has a really rough life, so he's a very good fighter by the end of that story, right? And we can do that too. We can play into those different things. And there's a lot of different human emotions and we just, it's like a color wheel. 
where yeah. there's all these little variations on the side and they're going to come into the, one of the big major pockets and each of those has a different expression when you're using those abilities on the table like if it's if it falls under the disgust one which also includes like sarcasm and things like that <laughs> so you know like how you're going to play it but like you've got all of these talk to the hand abilities which mm. are going to push people around like give you a lot of like okay not only am I hitting that guy, I'm going to move him back two inches and we're fighting next to a cliff. So, <laughs> bye. You know, cool. yeah. oh, and there's scary. always, yeah, in and out, like, like you disgust me, stay away. But also I am disgusting and like, I'm so revolting that the, my target is going to be distracted or mm -hmm. vulnerable for other people's, you know, attacks. Super fun. Oh, that sounds great. And it, it, you're right. It very much pulls from the source material. Um, we certainly see if you go back and look at really any movies like that. I would say any any kind of martial arts movie. It's not not just um, Eastern martial arts movies, but you know you've got that. Generally speaking, you have that um, kind of underdog thing going on as well, um, and that always like serves as a fuel for someone who is against the odds. Yeah, how well, they elevate themselves. Yeah, exactly. Like, what are you driven to do? Are you driven to be the best? You know, in this one, it's you're driven to save the world, but every yeah. warden's going to have their own story. Yeah. Well, I mean, you live in it. You, you know, like, it's yeah, where yeah. you keep it's your stuff. Important. You want to save it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, keep I my guess, stuff. you know, it's where, it's where the chief stakes are at. So, you know, it's yeah. probably worth it. <laughs> yeah, right. And, but, but in the meanwhile, you've got your own personal goals. Yeah. And sometimes those are aligned with, the main mission and sometimes they're against it and that's also part of the clock where you're like yeah. well i got something important that i want to handle and one of the things that we have a lot of fun with is because hell is a part of the setting and all the dead people go there yeah in like we can you, you've got your tragic backstory and all the people in it are dead or you've got a rival and you you kill him and normally you're like well you got to buy off rival or we'll find you a new one or whatever and this one now you can keep them because by the end of this, you're going to go to hell and there's going to be someone there waiting for you. And mm -hmm. they've got, you know, revenge on their mind. There's a bone to pick here. So those yeah. elements get to come back around multiple nice. times. It's okay if you kill them. Like in some <laughs> ways that makes it even harder later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you'll pay for it. <laughs> yeah, you'll pay for it. You know. Or it'll make an interesting story. Like, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the goal. Interesting oh, story. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, in terms of what's in the box, we should have a look. Yeah. Hopefully you all can see this. Uh, so you get the core book, 192 pages. That's not small. Nope. <laughs> it's not small at all. <laughs> nope. um, I mean, for, for reference, um, he says trying not to knock things over. So I've got my uh, suede book here. The and suede that is fewer pages. Yeah, oh, exactly. oh, yeah, it's 208. Yeah. So but basically... One extra um, signature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Um, so that's what you're looking at, because it'll be this size, right, I presume? Yep. Um, yeah, graphic so, novel is our standard size, yes. Yeah, which is great, by the way, but annoying at the same time. Um, it's annoying until you have enough books to actually make your shelf that size. That's and why it, we've put a bunch of them out. Now my shelf is happy and all unified. I've got about a half <laughs> shelf, half an Ikea shelf <laughs> uh, full of books this size. And um, I guess I just need more, right? Um, right? Working on it. Yeah, that's it. Um <laughs> What else do we have? The archetype uh, that we spoke about, the archetype cards, um, pawns, which are like your little standees. Yes. Um, two double sided fold out poster maps. Um, those are your combat maps those. for encounters. Yeah. Yeah, those poster maps are, are awesome. Um, the um, map of the Central Empire, um, a GM screen. Those GM screens that you guys do are, are really cool. Yeah. Because they, my, my GM style has changed over the years and i'm sure lots of people are in the same boat when you first start out you kind of you've got your the traditional like triple a4 gm screen and you're kind right. of hiding behind it like yeah yeah, I'm yeah, do yeah, this. yeah. That's, i mean that's what you see on things like critical role yes. as well you know you've got yeah. the screen and you're hiding behind it goes, ah um yeah and then I, you relax we always make sure that ours are landscape so that yeah. you can see up over them and I also encourage people to roll in front of it because it's mm -hmm. way more fun seeing the dice roll. But what's on the inside of it is like, because I mentioned you can travel and there's random encounters and things yeah. like that. That's the information that's on the inside of the screen, you know, and yeah. some of the critical stuff like, oh, if you're injured, here's what that looks like. 
creative combat. If you're taunting someone and do well, you mm. roll 2d6 and you can get these extra benefits. Here's what they mean. You know, mm. like that stuff that you might normally have to go look up in the book. We put it on the yeah. screen. So if you're going to use it, um, use it in a 32 page adventure, which I just finished last week. So awesome. <laughs> yeah, I found as I've gotten older, my, my, my GM style has changed, and I think a lot of people are probably in that situation. You kind of don't need the screen anymore because you don't really have yeah. so much to hide. And then, yeah, I think also it could become a danger because it can set up that GM versus players thing, and you want it to be a group. You know, it's a right. family at a table. So don't have – we can have barriers, but I think it's better to not have those barriers. And, the yeah, the Savage Worlds GM screens are full of great information. They're very small. Um, you can still hide stuff behind them if you really want to. Um, yeah, the other thing I'll talk back behind it is the miniatures or pawns. Yeah, exactly. So people don't know that that big one's about to come out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly that. Um, and the plot points campaigns are really interesting. Um, and I do think, I mean, if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about it, but the way that sure. a plot points campaign works mm -hmm. compared to like, a standard cam uh, a, a traditional campaign that you might get from something like yeah. D&D or even you know free league or, or whatnot the savage so, worlds campaigns feel a little different yeah right and and it, it's 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 based on what's worked at the table like you know yep. they, we hit lightning in a bottle on a certain campaigns hmm. and then of, like i personally like well i wasn't working there at the time but i ran one and i was like oh my god like, this is it. This is how I should write. Mm. And then got to come back and be like, here's my analysis, right? And they're like, oh, you know, like, even we weren't necessarily doing that anymore. <laughs> You're like, yeah, well, let's do this. But the yeah. great thing about a plot point is you got, it's, you know, sometimes six, sometimes 10, sometimes more main pivot point chapters, right? Mm -hmm. And they are not necessarily... the. the there, there are triggers for each one, but they, they're they not like dominoes that fall. Like yeah. there's a lot of different ways that you can get from chapter one to chapter two. And often there will be adventures in between before you, you hit the, the critical point. Like in some of the older ones, it's literally like now six months goes by game time. Yeah. Have Savage Tales or adventures in the meantime. And then when that time has passed, this next thing crops up. Yeah. And you move to it. And in each one, like, is a kind of a major pivot point. And Savage Worlds is built on this notion that you're not always going to succeed at these things. Mm -hmm. So, like, on some of my chapters, like, well, this could end in a mass battle, you know, but maybe you're just terrible at this. <laughs> I got to take into account that you didn't want to do it or you did it and lost. The dice were against you or whatever. Like, what happens if that battle gets lost? How do we get from chapter two to chapter three if that city falls? Yeah. And that's cool. Like, that's okay. And that opens up this space. If it doesn't have to go this one way, you know, to get there. And yeah, the heroes don't have to necessarily win at the end to still have an interesting setting when you're done, even when big stakes are involved. It's like, well, no, there's still place to go after this it just looks very different you know now it's kind of a turned into a post-apocalyptic you know <laughs> setting by the idea that's okay right um but and then in between these major beats and if you're low on time or like i just want to play this get the story and get out man you just go major beats bam 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 yeah and then there's the savage tales which can insert in parallel or between or whatever and they are triggered usually by events or locations or like oh man if you did this thing in chapter two that's going to trigger this savage tale and now there's this whole optional kind of side adventure that came up or you can just be like cool cool i'm just going to run that tonight that yeah. could be tonight's adventure it's fine yeah. we found that savage tales also work really well if you don't want your players to miss out on the plot points major campaign, but yes. one player can't make it. Someone can't make it. Like let's divert like a, yep. like a savage tale triggers instead. Yeah. Yeah. But, and it's very organic the way it works, right? It's like you yeah. do the thing 
And then at the end of it, GM's got to decide. Yeah, and this is the other fun thing. Like, you don't have to be as concerned about your timing. Yeah. On the story, because you're like, oh man, they did this just right, and everything went well, and they were super clever, and they solved it in two hours flat. Yeah. Okay, I don't really have to try to spin that out. Good job. Have a Benny. Spectacular. Yeah. I'm just like, here's the next thing. Oh, you're going to choose to go over here? Let's check for encounters along the way. Maybe you trigger a savage tail. I'm just going to go to page 92. Look what's there. I just need five minutes, y'all. Okay, here's what happens. Yeah. And you can just keep going. And man, is it, that's a relief as a GM. It's a so, relief, but it's also really exciting. It is. You know, and- it is. There's a relevant there's a, a random element to it and like i said i've run several of these multiple times mm. and they're always different it's so much fun seeing what groups will do different each time <laughs> okay the, i didn't uh, expect that <laughs> the plot point campaign is facially inevitable uh, that's the the big politics that we were talking about yes magic mirror yes magic mirrors yeah and again like in the middle chunk of yeah, in the beginning chunk of it, you've got to figure it's a mystery. You've got to figure out why all of these forces are arrayed against you. In the middle, you've got to go to the capital city and you've got to build up your cat your your political clout, right? Because you're kind of off in the the side, you know, like yeah, they're those guys that do the Hellgate. Yeah, they're technically important, but it's kind of like you know the the wall in Game of Thrones where it's like mm. they're technically important, but it's all cast yeah. off and so they're <laughs> far away and. We don't really think about them that much. So you've got to kind of prove like, no, no, we're it. Like we're what's going to save the emperor, the you know, this empire. Yeah. Or I don't like the empire. Like you guys are jerks. We're going to go our own way and you guys can just crumble. There's another yeah. option here. You know, and That's dealing with the, the fallout of that with those decisions. And then part three is like, okay, to fix this, we have to go to hell. <laughs> nice, nice. So when you were saying that hell features in this campaign, you, oh you mean yeah, literally. I mean literally. I mean you go through that oh, hell gate. It's a one way trip, right? Like, all right, <laughs> we're gonna go in there and deal with the bureaucracy and the forces that are behind there, and everyone that we've killed in those early chapters is gonna be waiting for us. <laughs> <laughs> and the only place you can get coffee is Denny's, um, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and, and, and Go on. And if things go well, you can fight your way back up out. You know. Oh, excellent! There, there, there might be a way out. There oh, might be a way out. Yeah. Awesome. You also get a new action deck. Uh, we haven't really spoken about action decks, but I mean that's basically it's a card deck, but it's beautiful. Yes, and they're oversized, right? Because for that exact thing of that's not you're giving someone a card and you want to see who's up next. Yeah. So they're like what? To- probably double the size of a normal playing card maybe a little bit yes more. I, th- I think they're double I, I, stupidly i don't have the exact i mean i've got mine right here but oh there you go yeah, yeah. that is exactly double the size ish, ish. yeah <laughs> um yeah so... when i say exactly for a given value of exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that'll work um and a full set of pennies um which is great so you don't need to buy your own poker chips um we should also talk about the actual pledge levels. So um, the I really want to play this game, but I can't afford to spend lots of money. Options. I, I'm in uh, Europe. I can't get it shipped to me. Yeah, yeah, digital. Absolutely. Yeah, we can get it shipped, but don't want to pay for it. Or, or whatever. Yeah, so, um, we understand. Player, <laughs> yeah, you get the, the core book and the archetypes, so that will help you to make your characters, etc. for $20 um, or $40 in print plus shipping. Uh, $50 as a GM gets you a bunch of stuff. So you get the, um, effectively, you get the pawns as like yeah. PDF. We do it. Out of and... Yeah, we call those figure flats where you yeah. print them and they're 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 cut. So you basically tri fold them and they'll stand on their own. So you don't I never thought of printing them. <laughs> I've just always ripped the image out and, and you right? can well, things like that. Yeah. That's what most people thing. do. You can buy it as a as a print as a digital thing and then use it in person. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> I not thought of that. Um, but you you get the maps and the maps are really high quality, uh, high resolution files as well. Um, so you will probably have to manipulate them so that they'll work nicely in your VTT if you're doing it that right. way. Yeah, the, but they'll print kind of, really well. 
Yeah, it looks like the, the, at that digital level, that's the like, here's the stuff, like you're gonna have to do it yourself. You know, you'll yeah. also be able to buy these items eventually in yeah. your VTT of choice because we've got those partnerships. Yeah. But in the meantime, here's the digital raw material to do your own thing with while we while you wait. And that's fifty dollars at digital, which um is, is fair and it's it's not cheap. You get a lot for your money. And I will just stress, I say this every time the cost of producing a game is not the physical product at the end. <laughs> it feels like it is. It's really not. Yeah. You know, like printing the book, not literally, but it's relatively pennies compared to all the other costs that go into it. Um, so um, it's pretty it, well subsidized, I would say. It, it's more than you think. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just yeah. say margins in our business. Are like you use real margins. artists and everything. I um, know, right? Yeah. I know it's going to be a rare thing, but... Um, Let's talk about the the, the print levels because yeah. even simple things like, oh well, you know, for for a hundred dollars they send me a printed map. Whoop de doo, it's just a printed map. Uh, I would go so far as to say, and this is a loaded statement, that Savage Worlds printed maps are not just printed maps. Yeah, they're they're, they're very good. Like the hundred dollar level, like that was one I pushed for because that was the that was what I would use at a table. This is, yeah. the, I've already got Savage Worlds. I've already got Bennies. I've already got dice. Like I don't yeah. really need a GM screen because that's not how I roll, mm. but I'm going to need the book. I want yeah. the maps that yeah. I'm going to play on. I want the pawns that I'm going to be using for it and um, the archetypes so that I can yeah. just throw those down and go, right? Yeah. And it's, it's it's slim, right? It's like, well, the box is better in every way, but if you don't want everything, mm -hmm. that's what that's for. Yeah, you know, that's here's your minimum. If you're just gonna play this at home and you've already got tons of Savage World stuff, that's your your easy out. And like the maps are really, uh, presuming the maps are the same as the maps that I've got for other products. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really kind of thick uh, yep. laminated cardstock. They're dry erase. Um, yes the um the pawns that like, for all of those of us that are board gamers um the pawns are punch out card yeah we love that <laughs> you know yes. it's just you know, very tactile um and yeah it does make a huge difference and of course you've got the the beautiful um kind of topographical map um, yes and the book and we talk about the cloth map Will that be at this level as well, or is that at the? Uh, I level? believe the cloth map is in that hundred dollar level as well because it is crucial to the campaign. Pretty sure it is. We can double check that in a second. I don't think we're at the um, stretch goals yet. Um, and then one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh yeah, seventy dollars gets the box set level. Yeah. Uh, digital, which has all those that extra cool stuff. Um, yep. So um, additional cards and. Uh, what do we get? So you've got the archetype dossiers, the, the box set, the oh, sorry, the box set box itself, yeah. the hardcover, the map pack one and two, just four maps basically. Correct. Um, pawns, two maps double sided. Yeah. Yeah. And they're big as well. You know, yeah, they, they take up a good chunk of table. 30 inch um, by 24, I think. Yeah. Um, post map action deck. GM screen inserts as PDF. So if you've got um, your own GM screen with like um, sleeves, yeah. then you can do that, which is great. Yeah. Well, that's on the PDF level as well. The the, the adventure that comes with the GM screen. So that's something else that, that you guys do is yeah. when you sell a um, GM screen, it always has an adventure with a bunch of. Uh, yeah. And that's um, a pretty industry standard fun. thing. Like the yeah. fold out panels, there's space for about 32 pages of something in there. So like you want to put a bonus in there and it also helps like keep everything, you know, from getting folded too hard or whatever. Yeah. So, and that 32 page adventure, that's the Ashen Monk uprising, which is essentially a completely separate, not, not really a plot point, you know, it's three, four major chapters, but it's separate from the main campaign. It could happen before it could happen after it could happen in the middle of, if you really want to complicate your life and it, um, basically explores an area of the map that we don't do a lot with inside the campaign. 
and gives people an idea of like, all right, if you want to do your own adventures, if you want to keep going with the story in new ways, here's one way you could do it. Like, here's what it can look like. And that's so much fun. And I do love the way that, as I said already, the, the way that the adventures are, are laid out. And um, I will say that you do need maybe a little bit more, like not everything in, in a, a pinnacle adventure is spelled out. There's quite a lot of... That's a very... It Go is. On. That's intentional though, right? Mm, like there yeah, are yeah. certain points where like, and this is something that we do debate where it's like, okay, we want to give you the material to be able to do it on your own, but we yeah. don't necessarily want to spell out in detail. This is exactly how it is because half the fun of a plot point is it is fuzzy how you're going to get from chapter one to chapter two. And yeah. only once you've run chapter one, do you really know like, okay, Here's where my players are. Here's what the situation is. I know where they've got to get eventually. How am I getting them there? We give ideas for that. Like we try to give you that ammo, but we don't want to lock you into anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that works really well. Um, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. It does, right? Yeah. Like there's some thing. of those are pretty much like, hey, look, here, here's your Legos. I don't know what you're going to build with it. Good yeah. luck. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you can do anything. What? <laughs> yeah. Um, but more than just saying do anything, it's like, oh, no, no. Here's the pieces, right? Yeah. Like the adventure generator. Here, yeah. here, here are the elements that are going to be in this dish. And that helps tremendously narrow yeah. your focus and be like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I know who my bad guys are. I yeah. know a plot twist that I can use here. All right. Yeah. Now let's bring those elements together with what's already transpired in this game. Plus, I know that this Lego set is a space set. Um, I'm showing my age now, um, and um, <laughs> and I remember what was on the beautiful art on the box, um, or the you know the the cover image or whatnot. So I've got a pretty good idea of how this is supposed to look. But let's just start yeah. building and see what happens. Um, yeah, yeah. And then the other two things you get at that hundred and fifty dollar. Um, box set level uh your uh, bennies 25 so 25 bennies look something like that nice yeah. big roll big um stack. yeah and uh you get your dice set and it's always nice to get i really like the fact that the dice are different in every box um i mean that's pretty People normal loves the dice yeah we gotta love the dice um, my, um, <laughs> I know, signif- like this is like, do we need dice? And everyone's like, I still want dice. Like, okay, yeah. dice it is. <laughs> my significant other stole the dice from my Lost Colony box. <laughs> like, they're just like one of her standard sets when we're not playing Dungeon Crawl Classics or something like that. And, like, you know. and I think she said they roll, I can't remember, either they always seem to roll high or they always seem to roll low. And one of the games that we play re- requires that you roll under. So it's just like, you know, she always like beeline specifically <laughs> for or against that set, depending on what we're playing, which is great. Um, so that's the $150 box set. Um, we would refer to that, by the way, and, and I know we have some... And the dragon, it, too. And the dragon, and the dragon, <laughs> yes. The dragon as well. Um, and will that fit in the box? I presume No, it's it will separate. not fit in the box. It comes separately, but yeah. it does not add to shipping. It's... it's Oh, nice. Like, we're just eating the dragon. Like, the whole idea with the dragon yeah, Eating was, the dragon. If you got the exactly, if you got the box, you get the dragon. Like yeah. it's not an like you can we we actually struggled. Like, do we make this an add-on or not? Mm. You know, and we decided like, okay, there are going to be enough people that just want the dragon on its own. We will make it an add-on. Yeah. But the general idea is, look, if you get the box, have a dragon. Yeah, it's not something you got to pay extra for. Yeah, um, and I think it's really cool, and I think it's going to be a, a lot, a lot of fun. Um, is there anything specifically about this setting that you personally are super proud of? I am proud of how much, like, because I'm a big fan of the genre, right? Like mm. I, for 30 years, I've been steeped in it, and there's so much that I love. Like, mostly, like, the, like anything based on Jin Yong's novels, right? Like, yeah. like I love. And I love how much of that we managed to reference in different ways that when it comes to the table and sometimes in unexpected ways where someone that's never read that or done that is going to take certain options. And I'm like, that feels right. Like that, like I've seen that 
in the stories. You don't know what you're copying essentially, but you did it. You got there on your own. That means these material, the, the basics here are right. Like those options exist and people are going to find them on their own. And that's, that's super satisfying to me. That's very cool. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I, I've got to say, um, okay. I've got two other questions for you. All right, bring them. Um, first one, let's say that thinking about our international friends, so let's say that someone wants to, to back this game, but they want to make it worthwhile. And like I did, um, maybe get some other things from uh, Savage World settings, for example, Yeah, yeah, yeah. in their pledge manager. Now, stop permitting, and this does not mean that you have to remember what, what is currently on the shelves, and this is not a guarantee of what will be available on the pledge manager, but from your knowledge of, of uh, what's currently in print, yeah, yeah. if you could pick, say, two other settings that are currently in print that you think you would love to play as well as Legend of Ghost Mountain, what would mm -hmm. be the two that you would go for? What, what, what uh, two settings do you love having at the table? So the, the two I would absolutely go for are Deadlands, because it's Deadlands. Like it's Deadlands awesome Weird West. It's in every way. The yeah, Weird West. Really is. Absolutely awesome, and it's like, ugh, it's integral, right? Yeah. The other one I'd pick is Holler. Oh, the latest one. So Holler came out like last year. It's Tim yeah. Tim Early. We, we seven, covered that right? in Kickstart Your Weekend. Um, yeah. We're set in uh, in Appalachia. It's, uh... Yes, kind of 30s feeling Appalachia, yeah. but like Deadlands with a weird twist, right? Like there's yeah. monsters, there's this blight, and you've got something very specific that you're trying to do and fighting the big boys and get yeah. out of there. But it's got just such a different look and a different feel, and it's got, like I said, it's just got this heart. Right, the, yeah. the Tim, Tim's poetry like oozes out of that one. But uh, <laughs> I, I used to say it wrong, but I've spent enough time around Tim, so I got schooled. So <laughs> it's an important one. I mean, you know, right? Yeah, but but and the other thing is like like Ghost Mountain, it's very specifically built to like okay, you've got your suede core. Here's yeah. what you can do with it. Like here's mm -hmm. a box that adds these elements, like these toys to your toy box, go play in a very different direction, right? Like, oh, yeah, Holler is not Deadlands, is not Ghost Mountain, but they're all Savage Worlds. And like, it kind of gives you a feel for like, wow, look what you can do with this. Yeah. Like how different these stories can be. This is what this does, you know? I love me a horror game. And I mean, there are, as, as you know, there's a few games that come out recently and that are around the corner from other publishers that are also set in Appalachia, which are wonderful. And um, it's really nice to see this setting kind of blooming and blossoming. Right, and, right, right. Um, I remember covering Holler and uh, at that point in time, I was torn because I think it's such a rich location that I wasn't sure that I could do it justice. Yeah, right. Does that makes sense. Well, that, and that's what Tim's so good at is... Yeah like bringing people into it and being like, yeah. okay, it's okay. Here, here's some basics, do your best, but yeah. like engage, like this is something you can engage with yeah. and without meaning to, you're going to learn, <laughs> you're going to learn yeah. stuff about exactly. you know, the area and history. And that's cool. Like, I love yeah. that. Yeah. I, I do definitely need to properly check Holler out. I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it just looks great. So, um, yeah, check out, if you haven't done already, Deadlands Weird West and Holler. Um, obviously, check out Legend of Ghost Mountain. My final question for you, and by the way, thank you so much, Daryl, uh, for well, joining us. Thanks for having me. Been absolutely <laughs> wonderful time. I letting, really appreciated it. Letting um, me blabber for so long. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, viewers, if you think we've just gone too long. <laughs> I'm no. not going to edit it down because I think this has been wonderful. But Finally, if you could leave us with a sound bite, which is you should play or buy, you should buy uh, Legend of Ghost Mountain and Savage Worlds if you like martial arts, mystic mayhem. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Again, thank you so much, Daryl uh, from Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Um, this has been 
the Dark Orb, and I guess it's technically a kickstart your weekend. We're talking about one of our favourite projects, uh, which is, as we've already said, Legend of Ghost Mountain, and it looks like that right there. It's currently on Kickstarter for another seven Earth days. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you you got to get in quick if you want that free dragon, free for only one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, <laughs> it's technically accurate. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah this has been a blast uh, i hope you've enjoyed it if you have please hit like um please consider subscribing we do have a patreon as well um more importantly go and check out this project it's super cool and uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments we'll see you again very soon i'm sure thank you again daryl thank you. Having you on. and uh until next time, time. <laughs> <laughs> until next time everyone uh i hope your dice rolls are way better than mine. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Good night.